Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. We are at lecture 1.7, Kernel-Based Parallel Programming, and we will be discussing multidimensional kernel configuration today. The objective of this lecture is for you to understand the use of multidimensional thread grids. And in particular, we're going to be discussing the use of multidimensional block and thread indices, and we'll also be um, discussing how we can, in practice, map block and thread indices to data indices to process two-dimensional uh, pictures and so on. And um, after this lecture, you should be able to uh, easily generalize all the concepts into the processing of three-dimensional data structures using three-dimensional blocks and uh, grids. This picture um, was shown earlier in the introductory lecture where we uh, assume that uh, the host has launched a thread, uh, a kernel one. And um, this generates a grid of threads. And we assume that uh, the user has specified that we're going to generate a two-dimensional grid, uh, which is reflected by the uh, two-dimensional indices of the blocks. And then uh, we also assume that each block has uh, three-dimensional uh, threads. So each thread in this picture has uh, three indices. The, uh, the convention that we're going to be using is that for a, uh, for a two-dimensional uh, structure, we're going to show x and y indices. The first index will be x, and the second index will be y. And for a three-dimensional uh, structure, we're going to show the indices in the order of x, y, and z. So the first index will be x, second index will be y, and the third index will be z. So um, we're, uh, here we have a very simple example, and now we're ready to look at a more practical uh, example. So we, sh we see here that um, uh, here a two-dimensional picture of pixels. And um, um, we have 62 pixels in the y dim dimension and 72, uh, 6 pixels in the x dimension. So we will be calling this picture a 62 by 76 picture, which um, it means that uh, the first number uh, in the, in, in the uh, configuration will be the number of pixels in the y dimension, and the second number will be in the x dimension. Uh, we assume that we're going to be using a 16 by 16 thread block. 16 threads in the y dimension and 16 threads in the x dimension to process the picture. Just like in the vector um, addition example, we need to make sure that we have enough threads in both the y dimension and the x dimension to process all the pixels. So uh, we're going to need to uh, launch four thread blocks in the y dim uh, dimension to cover all the 62 pixels. When we launch four thread blocks, we have 64 threads. So uh, we have all the uh, 62 pixels covered, and we also need to have two. Uh, we need to have. Uh, we need to. We will have two extra threads in the web dimension that uh, should not be doing anything. And in the x dimension, we're going to need to launch five thread blocks, and that will give us 80 threads. So uh, we can. We would cover all the 76 pixels and we will have four threads that should not do anything. And this will be reflected in the way we uh, write the kernel. Before we look at the kernel code, uh, I'd like to quickly review the, um, the way C and C++ um, lay out a two-dimensional uh, matrix or two-dimensional array into the linear address space. In the modern computers, all the memory data are stored in a linear address space. And um, even though the con um, conceptually we have a two-dimensional array in C, ultimately all the elements will be stored in a linear order. And this is called the uh, 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 layout. And C adopts the uh, convention of row major layout, which means that uh, all the elements in a row are uh, preserved in their relative position. So all the neighboring uh, elements in row zero will be placed consecutively in the um, memory, linearized memory. And all the elements in row one will also be placed in consecutive locations. So um, in this particular case, whenever we need to access a uh, 
a element using a linearized address, we can generate that uh, address by multiplying the row index by the width of the uh, of the array and plus the column index. So, for example, uh, in order to access uh, element n21, uh, we have a row index of two and um, column index of one. So we can multiply the uh, the the row index two by the width, which is four, and then we plus the column index, which is one, and this gives us nine. So if you uh, look at the top of the uh, picture, we show the linearized index for all the m elements. The first four are 0, 1, 2, 3, and then the next ones are 4, 5, 6, 7. And so uh, element 9 is actually the original n21. And this um, will be used for accessing all the dynamically allocated um, uh, arrays in, uh, in the CUDA kernels. And so um, uh, even though uh, this is familiar to all of you, it's very important that you keep this in mind when you look at any of the CUDA kernels. And uh, for those of you who came from Fortran background, Fortran adopts a um, column major layout convention where all the elements uh, in, the, in a row, a column will have their relative positions preserved. So uh, in this particular case, if you look at the C uh, layout, the, uh, the adjacent elements in a column are actually laid out in a um, strided way uh, that are have not, uh, so that they are with, uh, row width away from each other. Whereas if you had a Fortran program, all these elements in the same column will actually be placed in adjacent locations. Now that we, uh, we understand how uh, CUDA or C and C++ uh, linearize the, uh, a two-dimensional uh, array, now we're ready to look at a, a piece of kernel code. So here is a picture kernel, which is a very, very simple kernel that would uh, multiply the pixel, every pixel uh, value in a picture by 2.0. So this is essentially magnifying the value of all the pic uh, pixel, uh, pixels in a picture. So uh, here we show that the, the kernel accepts four arguments. The first one is pointer to the input picture, and the second one is pointer to the output picture, and the third one is the, uh, the number of elements uh, in, the, uh, in the row in the uh, x direction, and uh, the fourth one is the number of elements in the, uh, in the vertical uh, or y uh, dimension. So um, when we uh, determine uh, which pixel a particular thread should uh, uh, process, we have a uh, y index generation and x index generation. The y index generation generates a row index. Remember that row index selects one of the rows in that uh, in the uh, y dimension. So that's why we're using the y indices. So we will just use our familiar pattern of uh, block idx dot y times block dim dot y plus thread idx dot y. And this ensures that every possible row will have a, a, a thread that, uh, that, that covers that row. And then we have the same uh, pattern for the x dimension, and this is pretty much identical to the vector addition case, where uh, every element in the x dimension will have a thread to cover um, that uh, particular pixel value. So uh, now that we have generated appropriate uh, row index and column index, um, all the threads can now use the row index and column index to do the processing. We can first test whether a, um, whether the thread is within the valid range. So uh, we will first test if row index is less than m. So uh, m is the number of uh, pixels in the uh, y dimension. So the row index needs to be within that range. And also we will test whether the column index is less than n. Uh, n is the number of pixels in the x dimension. So whenever both conditions are satisfied, we know that a thread is within the valid range of a two-dimensional area where the, there are valid pixels. 
So now the thread can proceed to uh, to multiply the uh, the input pixel by two and assign that to the output. So uh, here you show you see the linearized addressing where um, the thread is going to use row multiplied by n, which is the number of pixels in each row. So this is the width plus uh, column index. And um, you're, we're also going to use exactly the same expression to write into the output matrix so uh, or output array. So this will allow every thread to pick the correct, uh, its assigned um, row and column index position pixel, multiply by two and write that into the output array. So here we show the host code that uh, that uh, launches the picture, uh, picture uh, kernel. So uh, we assume that the host uh, host in the host code, the variable n uh, holds the number of pixels in the uh, y dimension, and um, uh, n shows uh, uh, holds the number of pixels in the x dimension. <laughs> and uh, in our example of 62 times 76 m will be equal to 62 and n will be equal to <coughs> 76. So um, now uh, we, uh, we're going to launch the kernel and this is how we make sure that uh, all the kernels will have enough threads. The kernel will be executed by enough threads to cover both the y dimension and the x dimension. So we, sh we take the uh, n value, and we're doing a seeding function of essentially a, a seeding function of n divided by 16. And this is n minus the familiar expression of n minus 1 divided by 16 plus 1. <coughs> we do the same thing for x. So we have n minus 1 divided by 16 plus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, within each block, we're going to just have 16 threads in the x dimension, 16 threads in the y dimension, and one thread in the z dimension. So this gives us a two-dimensional grid and two-dimensional block structure to cover the picture given. And then we, we use the configuration to launch the kernel. And then uh, we call the picture kernel with the dim grid and dim block. And we give the, uh, the four arguments, the uh, pointer to the input picture, pointer to the output picture, M and N. So this will ensure that um, the kernel will have enough threads to cover both dimensions. And then um, you know, we will be able to, uh, in the kernel, we'll be able to test whether each thread should be acti uh, uh, acting on a pixel or the thread is outside the valid uh, dimension. Uh, uh, so that uh, valid range, so that the thread should not take any action. So this picture shows a little bit more analysis of what actually happens at runtime. So uh, we launched um, four thread blocks by five thread blocks. Uh, so we actually will end up launching 20 thread blocks. And we're actually going to have four different situations as far as the execution of the thread blocks are concerned. The first case is in the upper left corner where um, all the threads will have both their y index and x index to be in the valid range. So all the threads within these three by four, 12, all these 12 thread blocks will have all their threads fully executing and fully processing the picture. And the second one is the one on the upper right side. These threads will find their y indices within the value range, but x indices in the, uh, not in the value range. Uh, uh, well, some of the uh, x indices will be in the value range, and some of the x, uh, x in indices will not be in the value range. So in this case, some of the threads in that, um, in, in the, uh, on the right end in these thread blocks will not execute. And then we have the third uh, situation where all the threads in the x dimension will find their x indices in the valid range, but some of the threads in the y dimension will find their uh, index to be outside the valid range. So in, these th uh, in the third case, you will have 
uh, these thread blocks will have some of their threads uh, in the bottom of, their, uh, of the thread block, not processing any pixels. And finally, we have the fourth case where um, the threads, some of the threads in the extent uh, will find their uh, X index to be in the outside the value range, and some of the threads will find their Y index to be outside the value range. And in fact, some of the threads in the very corner, the lower right corner, will find their, uh, both of their X and Y indices outside the value range. So uh, these, uh, you know, situations will all happen. And uh, this uh, is an important picture for you to remember uh, when we dis begin to discuss the performance implications. For now, it suffices for you to see, to remember that uh, whenever we, do, we have a process, a two-dimensional picture, and uh, we use boundary check to, uh, to check whether each thread has its Y index or X index within the uh, value range, then we will end up with these four possible situations or four possible cases. And this brings us to the conclusion of this lecture. And um, uh, for those of you who would like to uh, understand more about the material, I would like to uh, encourage you to read sections 4.1 and 4.2 of the textbook. Thank you.